All right, what's going on, YouTube? Before I get started, just let you know, fireworks is going off crazy outside. There's no one getting shot, all right? So I'm safe. Everybody's safe. Um, happy 4th, happy Independence Day to everyone out there. Um, all the vets, salute to you. All the military people out there, to anyone that served this country, salute to you guys, all right? Happy 4th of July, everything like that. Now... Uh, I made a video this morning about Jaime Magia, all right, and Triple G and Canelo have an interest in fighting him. All this news has been coming out within the past two days, okay? I made a video about it this morning. I don't like it. You know, Jaime Magia, not a bad fighter, but unproven at 154, okay? I understand that he holds a title, but he beat Saddam Ali in order to get that title. Uh, Saddam Ali doesn't even fight at one. 54, okay? He doesn't even fight there, all right? So, Hami Magia gets the title, has a few fights, has a gift win in his last fight against Dennis Hogan, all right? He hasn't fought the top dogs at 154, okay? You already know who, who's there. You have you have the Charlos, you got Harrison, you got J-Rock, you got Hurd, you got all of these guys that's been there, 154. Um, You got, what, Lara? You got all these guys there that's been there, all right, and Mangia hasn't fought any of them, and he hasn't even been mentioned amongst fighting any of them. Okay, Canelo Alvarez, Gennady Golovkin, already historical guys, pound for pound fighters. Okay, those dudes much more experienced, much more skilled. The, Jaime doesn't belong in the ring with those guys. He's 22 years old. He doesn't belong there. And I said that the only reason why he's even maybe possibly being brought up is because he didn't look good in his last fight. And maybe they're just ready to sick the dogs on him. Because if somebody beats him, they're probably going to want Canelo or Triple G to beat him. All right? I could be wrong, but that's just my opinion. I don't know. I just don't understand why... His promoter would want to stick Jaime Magia in there with Canelo or Triple G. He has no chance of winning those fights. All right? Now, the update. Eric Gomez, president of Golden Boy Promotions. He contacts Eddie, Earn, Eddie Hearn. All right? They speak today. Gomez says, listen, Demetrius Andrade, we are interested. Okay? We are interested in fighting him September 14th. Putting him against Canelo Alvarez. Will he be ready? Does he want that? Eddie Hearn replies with a big yes. This is on ESPN. Dan Rayfield reported this story. Eddie Hearn, big yes. Yes. We want that fight. Good. Because we want that fight too. We want that fight too. And a few of you that don't want the fight, would you rather get Jaime Mangia? What would you rather get? I mean, because the guy is undefeated and he holds a belt. Why not fight Andre? You know, he's undefeated. He's more proven than Jaime Mangia at 154 and 160. He's a two division champion. And he's coming off of his best career win, arguably. Why not fight him? He's with the zone. What's the problem? Easy fight to make. He's ready to go. He wants to fight. He's been calling out Triple G, Canelo. He's been calling him out. Now, we already know that Canelo has other options, all right? This is what Eddie Hearn said to Eric Gomez based on this report. You're exploring other op options. I mean, Canelo could do whatever he wants. Canelo is the man at the end of the day. All right? Not trying to discredit him at all when I say that I'm disappointed in him finding Jaime Mangia. He's just too good for that. I'm trying to give him his props. I've always gave Canelo his props. This is no shade on Canelo. Him and Triple G are just too good to be fighting that kid. All right? So... I understand Canelo can do whatever he wants. You got Sergey Kovalev out there. You got Callum Smith out there. You got Triple G Trilogy out there. You got Jamal Charlo. You got a whole bunch of options you can take. 
You can and you can really literally fight whoever you want because you're Canelo Alvarez. But Demetrius Andrade at 160 would have been if that fight does go down. That would have been an undisputed fight. All right. I mean, that that would be a great win. You pick up three belts. You beat Daniel Jacobs, and then you go right into fighting Demetrius Andre. I mean, you gotta go. I mean, I mean, you just fought Triple G twice. That is, I mean, that is all the credit. You get all the credibility. I mean, whatever credibility you don't have, whatever people shame you about, listen. Whatever people criticize you about, you fight Demetrius Andre coming off of winning against Daniel Jacobs. What can people really say about you? But there's people that can say much about you fighting Jaime Mangia. Now, I felt that it's kind of strange how obviously that news about Jaime Mangia wasn't well received. So now we get this news the next day. Well, Andre should have been first in line. All right. Maybe not over Sergey Kovalev or, you know, a few other names, but Andre should have been in the conversation immediately, at least before a Jaime Mangia. So, I believe that the news wasn't well received, and now Andrade is an option. I mean, that Andrade fight, I see that being more risk, realistic than the Jamal Charlo fight because Jamal A, they already gave up the title to him. He's full WBC champ now. They already gave that up. They're not going to give that up in order to fight him anyway for the same belt that they could have kept in the first place. So I see Demetrius Andre being more realistic. Plus, he's already with the zone. So that's a fight that it's easier to make. All right? Just trying to be fair. Now, Demetrius Andre, this is what you need to do. If you are listening to this video, you don't turn this fight down for whatever money that they offer you. We're hearing about Sergey Kovalev uh, low balls. If they lowball you, if they give you that same amount, if it's lower than Daniel Jacobs, if it's half than what Daniel Jacobs have made, which wouldn't be a big deal because Daniel Jacobs is the biggest, the bigger draw to begin with. Daniel Jacobs is the more proven fighter at 160. If they offer Daniel Jacobs more than they offer Demetrius Andre, I'm totally fine with that. And Andre should be too. You have an opportunity to fight Canelo for three belts. You better fight him. So if they offer you what? The six million dollars or whatever the amount is. Five million, six million. You better take that shit. That's Canelo Alvarez. You're not going to get a chance again. If you turn this down. The news is already out. Eddie Hearn put it out there. You better take this fight. And I'm only saying this because I've been consistent with this. I was consistent when it came to Dillian White. Turning down the Joshua rematch at Wembley. Okay. I've said this about Deontay Wilder. Turning down the zone deal for the 100 million or whatever with Joshua. All right. I am always consistent with that. You get a call from Anthony Joshua, Manny Pacquiao, Canelo Alvarez, or even in Triple G. You better take that fight. You take the fight. It doesn't matter. You take that fight. Because if you win, you will be rewarded. Look at Andy Ruiz. He ended up stopping Anthony Joshua for a clean $7 million. Nice, smooth $7 million. Now he's going to get paid much more than that in a rematch. Now he has three out of the four titles. He's unified a heavyweight. He's made history. He's made history with that. He's on TV shows now. He's on every meme on Instagram. He's all over social media. You get rewarded when you take a smooth seven million to fight a cash cow. So Andre, you take that fight, especially with everything you've been through at 154, with your old promoter being stripped by the WBO because of inactivity. All right, not being able to get any fights that you wanted or claim that you wanted. All right, network situations, Showtime deals, Rock Nation deals, 
turning down. Guys don't even remember that Demetrius Andre turned, well, didn't turn it down, but he didn't take the fight with, with uh, what's this guy's name from a, uh, the guy that just fought Charlo? Oh, what's the fighter name that just fought Charlo, that gave Jamal Charlo that, that tough fight? I can't think of his name right now, but you guys know what I'm talking about. All right. Demetrius Andre has been in so many situations. Matthew, uh, Matt, Matt Korobov. Demetrius Andre could have moved up to 160 to fight Matt Korobov for the 160 strap. Andy Lee stepped in and knocked Korobov up. That's what really happened back then. So Andre has been around. And he's been around a lot of bullshit. You get a fight with Canelo at this point, you better take that fight. I don't want to hear anything. Now, if the fight doesn't work out or Canelo decides to move elsewhere, he has options, like I said. If he doesn't take the Andre fight, I don't want to hear it's because I was low ball. We don't want to hear that. You're not a superstar. This is like you fighting Floyd Mayweather at this point. You better take the fight. It's too much on the line for that. You are a real 160 fighter. You're not struggling to make weight. There won't be no weird catch weights and none of that stuff. You take the fight. Regardless of what the rules are, you take that fight. Okay? So, now that this news has come out, if Canelo still decides to fight a Jaime Mangia, it's like, wait, why, wait, wait, why? Team Andre, Team, uh, you know, Eddie Hearn already said that. They said yes. You already, uh, you know, you know that they're interested in taking a fight. And they didn't send an offer yet based on the news. But if you can't work out the Sergey Kovalev situation or whatever, there's a few other options you have. If you're not going to fight Triple G, listen, I'm fine with all of these fights. I just think the Jaime Mangia fight is ridiculous. So if you take that fight, all of all of these other options, I'm going to have a problem with it. Even it has nothing to do with just Andre. And I think that's the thing that some of you guys is reading some of the comments and guys are making excuses for Canelo. I'm like, listen, I'm not a Canelo basher. If he's having knee problems and he wants to take a lighter touch, don't fight. Don't send offers to Sergey Kovalev if you need a lighter touch. What are you guys talking about? Oh, the whole Mexican thing is... He doesn't... He fights on the holidays every year. All his opponents... Opponents are not Mexican fighters. What's Daniel Jacobs? What's Amir Khan? He doesn't need to fight those fighters. What's Triple G? He doesn't need to fight a Mexican fighter. That's bullshit. Come on, we know that's bullshit. So, yeah, you know, I think... Um, Listen, I think, uh, listen, now that the information is out there, we should be able to work something out, all right? Something needs to be worked out. What is Triple G in a trilogy, Andre, it should be at least a top guy at 160. If he wants to move up and fight a Callum Smith, a Billy Joe Saunders, those fights are cool. Uh, Sergey Kovalev, they end up working out. That's, that's a cool fight. Those are all cool fights. Those are all challenging fights, you know? But let's not make excuses for Canelo. He's too good for that. Uh, just want to end up this video. If Canelo chooses to go and move forward and not fight Demetrius Andre, uh, for whatever reason, Andre, Charlo, I didn't forget about you, you two. Okay? Didn't forget about you two. In fact, it's funny because just the other day, I actually stumbled, I was watching a bunch of videos on YouTube and I stumbled across the old uh, confrontations that Andre and the Charlo twins had, all right? One where Paulie was in the middle of it, another one where Andre went to uh, Jamal Charlo's post-fight interview, I forgot who Jamal beat, he beat J-Rock, I believe, and uh, Andre went there and said, when am I getting my fight? Charlo, you know, mainly Jamel, was being tough. Doing a lot of talking. I still want to see that fight. I still want to see that fight. So Andre and Charlo. Since there is bad blood. A lot of shit talking between you two. If 
Triple G goes on to fight someone, doesn't fight the neither one of you. If Canelo goes on to fight someone else, doesn't need doesn't fight neither one of you. You guys both hold titles at 160. You guys should fight each other. And then maybe whoever wins that fight, maybe a Triple G or Canelo will fight you. So I'm with that. For the people that's leaving those comments, I agree. If Canelo doesn't fight them, then cool. Let them two fight. But if Canelo is exploring options, just know Charlo and Andre should be an option. All you people that's, that's saying, oh, Canelo shouldn't fight them. They didn't do shit. Well, what did Jaime Mangia do? That was my point. All right? So I'm going to leave it at that. Um, I'm done with making videos tonight unless something crazy goes out, comes down. You know, I'm going to try to go out there and see what's going on with these fireworks and everything like that. Maybe grab a drink. Uh, you know, make some food real quick. Uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.